Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please do, don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show, as sharing the show increases the live audience, of course, and this in turn increases the chance of a more diverse panel so please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you've not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate now we are joined by arwin and sleeping warrior how are you both doing gentlemen we also have stephen chess oh we do hello stephen hey what's up late arrival good to have you good to have you arwin how are you yeah doing all right Still getting cooked here every morning and early afternoon. Nice. The weather's turned in the last fortnight. I'm sure Stephen knows exactly why that is. Well, you say early in the morning and early in the afternoon. It's because the moon is rising later in the afternoon and cooling later. Huh. Uh, I saw the moon as a very sharp sickle. Afternoon, a very sharp. Right. It's getting warmer as well because we're approaching the summer and the full moon. I guess so. Yeah, Stephen spent the last couple of years paying very close attention to what the celestial bodies do in relation to the weather at his specific, specific location and basically tracking it in terms of how it works with the orbits of what's above us rather than what they say on the news. And he's got it down to a fine art now. It's amazing. Cool. Hey, Stephen, I... If, if, I got a question for you yes. uh, relating to the moon. Uh, does the moon actually admit more cold when more of its uh, visible surface, uh, well, when more of its surface is visible? So when it's like a full moon, does it literally give off more cold than if it's just a sickle? Is that also involved in the, in the heat? I'm not, I'm not sure whether it's the position of the sun and the moon or the phase of the sun and the moon to me it seems like it does so like approaching the alignment it seems like it starts to give off less but towards the full it does seem to have more of a cooling effect hmm. interesting can i just say it's 2-0 to liverpool at 73 minutes <laughs> not that anybody really inter is interested in football on the fe debate but it's interesting to me 2-0 liverpool 73 minutes come on you reds <laughs> yeah it's the only balls you get to keep <laughs> yeah it's the only it's ball the we can prove yeah. Yeah, it's all and balls. it's the one you get to kick as well so nathan we got a shout out from uh, zach last night did you see that i didn't see it no you mentioned it a moment ago before we started but no i didn't i didn't catch that so, Zach, Zachary Zavala, or good times for you, as he calls himself. Good times for all. Um, he was... Pardon? I'll just say it just so it's actually on the record. So, G-U-D-T-I-M-S, number four, all. Good times for all, or good Tims, as he spells it. But good times for all is the YouTube channel, Zachary Zavala. And he was on, um, I think he was on Lake Ontario, I think it is looking at Toronto from 35 miles away. Now, I know when I've done my 30-mile observation, 30 miles makes things ridiculously small, um, like a pixel on the horizon, and he's done 35 miles, which I would expect it to be even more difficult to get. And basically, you can see right the way down to the street level. And it's because it was basically really, really clear. Clear day, you get good results. A not-so-clear day, you get not-so-good results. Which is what I found out yesterday when me and Ruhif were talking about boats that I couldn't work out what they were. And Ruhif managed to identify them. And he said, hey, the Stenner Hibernia is in the proximity of you right now. Go and see if you can see it. 
I went out, went outside with the camera, and yeah, I could see it, but um, it wasn't as good as what I was expecting. And because it wasn't as good as I was expecting, I was working out what the cause was. And the cause was the visibility. The visibility was not as good as what it has been in the past. And literally, if the, if the, if the boat would have been an extra half mile or maybe two, uh, a mile further away, I wouldn't have even seen it. That's how uh, important the visibility is to any observations. So it's not to do with the weather. It's to do with how far you can see the visibility. So shout out to Good Times for All. 35 miles, seeing the beach. Isn't that what Cat Earth wanted to see, Nathan? That's what they all want to see, isn't it? But even if we get those images, it's going to be time for non-standard refraction. Yeah, but the problem with non-standard refraction is they still can't prove causation. In other words, they cannot prove that there is a curve, that the light is bending round for us to see it. I mean, obviously, in the Skunk Bay footage, we see that everything was all jumpy all round the place. Um, during the middle of the day, but as it came to the evening, it all began to settle down and form a state of equilibrium. And that would therefore mean towards the end of the day, they're going to argue it's bending behind the curve. The reality is you can make your own mind up. What's the default position? Is the default position flat, the way it appears? Or is it this slightly looming non-standard refraction high-e nonsense that they talk about, but they can't prove? So... Check out, and, uh, Zach's, uh, hangout. Check out Zach's hangout from last night. It was about three hours long and just basically watch the last 10 minutes or so and you'll see the results. And it's basically 35 miles. You're seeing street lights. How is that possible if it's a ball? He's actually just put a video up in the last hour called The Chicago Skyline is Not a Mirage. Research Flat Earth. Good times for all. So, yeah. Right. I haven't seen that. It must just be the, the, a, a shortened version or just the clip itself. It's about 4 minutes, 11 seconds long. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be his detailed expl explanation for what he's doing or what he's seeing. But presumably that was all in the three-hour hangout he had last night. So Ding Ding Knockout says, Big up to Nathan and Riley. Fair fucking play for doing this shit. Not backing down. This is what they want. Yep. At the end of the day, I mean, they, me and Nathan don't always agree on stuff off air. I think it's common knowledge that we, well, me and Ranty don't agree. I mean, we don't really know what's going on, but we do know what's not going on. And you can test it yourself. You can you can realise that you need a good day and a bit of zoom, and you can see stuff that shouldn't be there by the curvature of the earth. And that means that we can discuss everything else. Everything else becomes moot, but you can tell what's not happening. So who cares what shape it really is? Who cares if we've really got a model? What we do know is that it ain't a ball. don't need a model. The model's the problem. Models are pseudoscience and people want to show you a model and say this is how the world works. It's like, no, that's not science. That's just a model. And can I just remind folk that when, um, what's his face, uh, uh, it was uh, Cathexis. Cathexis asked the Rumpus and Jeremy, um, could he see a, a copy of the model, please? Um, could he see what they class as the model? And turns out they haven't got a model they say they've got a model but they don't actually have one to produce when requested so when you ask for them can i see a copy of the model to see what we're talking about and i expected them to say google earth because the rumpus says things and then gets proved wrong and then re-rinses it next week and then reasserts it to be correct i totally expected them to say google earth but they, they distanced themselves from google earth and said that's not their model and then when when asked what is their model not so basically it's stories not a model simply stories maths and stories and gyroscopes um inside planes got debunked as the pendulous veins argument proving the adjustment to gravity and the curvature of the earth it got debunked to the point where brenda simply was making making shit up and um, upon challenge by nathan um, she was ejected because she was putting words in there that simply were not there. And when challenged again, she reasserted the position and Nathan wouldn't accept it anymore. She kicked Hey, out. Mark, how you doing? Hey. You hear us, Mark? Hey, Cat Earth, can you hear that us? Hello? That won't Hi. Be 
Can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear us, Alex? Oh, okay. What's that? I was just asking. We've that got two new guests, Alex. Alex and you. Just haven't heard anything from Alex yet. No, I kicked him because I don't. I don't think it's a real one, mate. Oh, okay. Is Alex Grover with the machine gun? No, <laughs> Cat Earth is Alex. The guy with the machine gun is Kermit the Frog. Oh, okay. That's Kermit. Kermit. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry. You're not familiar with Kermit. Well, no, I I was close. I got I got the show. I <laughs> I, I mean, I was far away, just stuck green, and I thought I don't I I could never picture Kermit with a freaking machine. <laughs> Same as Stephen Chess. I was actually wondering. It's yeah, always- I was wondering what. What do the globalists say about your avatar with the sunlight streak down the ocean there? They claim that these reflection, reflections cannot happen on a flat earth. <laughs> I just laugh when they say that. Why? Oh, and by the way, shout out to Tony Vincenzo. He says that, Nathan, you've created this perfect little echo chamber with fake links and security at the back door. Go on, go on respond to that, Nathan. Tell them about what an echo chamber is and what this is not. Well, this is public. Anyone can join. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Tony. But you got to speak up right away when you join. Yeah, I mean, there is. We also get Wait, that's, trolls. Well, that's it's not true. Everybody can join. Everybody can be booted too. It's not like you're pitching from from his point of view. He's right. It's not exactly a democracy. Uh, oh right. I mean, yeah, it's not a democracy. It is a totalitarian situation i i'm in control of the show it's got to be that way i've got to keep control of the show so to a certain extent yeah there's going to be people that like yesterday with brenda if you're just going to lie four times in a row when challenged then you, there's no point in you being here you know that's not what we're here for and obviously when oh. guns and everyone starts fighting and shouting over each other that kind of isn't easy to keep hold of and then when rumpus leaves and you can just tell what the atmosphere is cutting off and everyone carries on talking again, everything's fine. Ah, hello, true. chocolate. Hello, hello. Hello, chocolate. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hey, man. Yeah, you spoke up. Hey, hey what's up, guys? Good Ooh, to have you. I was just about to press it there, chocolate. No, no, just in time. Yeah. It's not chocolate. <laughs> like. It's a real one. How'd you say but the there's name? another one. Chocolate Say. So, how do you pronounce your name? Is it chocolate Say Ian? Sayin, Sayin. Chocolate saying. Chocolate saying. So go on then. Where, where does that name come from then? Oh, what? Look, look at this picture. Come on. Can't, it's too small. It's from Dragon Ball Z. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of Dragon Ball Z, but no, no, I'm not familiar, mate. No. God. I, I, I try not to watch cartoons. <laughs> tell him, tell him, Marwan. Cartoons, <laughs> cartoons, and CGI just don't do it for me. Uh, the only, the only thing I know uh, about well. Dragon Ball is the um, when YouTube occasionally will give me a suggested video, why they give me this, I don't know, but it'll say something like 10 scenes that are totally unsuitable for children from Dragon Ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Dragon Ball is not really a kid's cartoon. It's a Japanese anime, so it's a little bit more violent than a little for bit, little kids. A <laughs> little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> It's not completely but, uh, and totally centered around violence, but <laughs> Nathan, well, it kind of it kind of is though. But yeah, I was being <laughs> Nathan, it was it's really, a it's a comic. violent cartoon. Is it yeah. more violent than Astro? It's it's martial arts. It's, it's, it's one of the cartoon. most violent cartoons. That's not just a movie that I've seen. Oh, okay. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm still not going to watch it, but. I was just, again, if we could cur- growing more powerful well, it- and then blowing up planets. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, so we up. get off this planet. I don't really give a shit. But I was wondering, Nathan, because I sent somebody something and I'm waiting for their comeback. And I wonder, since it's, it has to do with this basic avatar you got of the sunlight streak down the ocean, what do they say? 
well normally when you when you put when people see this image they don't they don't give that any consideration and it's the reason I've got them up there that's why I use them that you know that reflection that comes to your feet is a, is an absolute globe earth killer it's a flat earth proof in itself but what they will normally do is insert the presupposition that we're on a curve and that the earth is turning and that it's spinning around the sun and that that's why the sun sets and look there's a proof there in it in and of itself is what they would no, say well, this, i'm not knocking the sunset clearly clearly that one's up for debate uh and not that i agree with them either but they will debate it to hell but how do you how do they argue the streak that because when you put a lamp to your freaking globe you get you don't get that streak let's put it that way it's not <laughs> simple they don't well, what do they say? So I'm, I'm kind of oh, waiting. No, it looks just like that when you do it on a on a model when when you shine a light on a marble. No, it it, it looks like that. It doesn't, that's, but they just say it. That's how it, it looks like that on, on a globe. Do they that's see that on a marble? No, of course they don't. Do, do they, they see say, the that's street? how it's going to happen on a globe? That's what they say. Uh, yeah, but you give any, them on any. But you give them a globe. And a lamp to hold. <laughs> On any shiny uh, round surface, you will always see a spotlight that is a disc light or a ball, whatever it's going to be. Lamp. It's always going to be a, a small circle that's going to be Hello? visible. Hey, Betty. How you doing? Good Hello. Time, Hello. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. I hear an echo. That'll dissipate. It's oh. just because you've ju only just oh, joined. Okay. Lovely. Okay, and the other, the other one that I have since I don't make it on the show that often, and I get to talk is the first avatar, the one with the four quadrants. I don't know your name. Me? Obviously, the quiet one. But uh, yeah, yeah. I well, I don't know who that is. It's, uh, it's Arwen. Whatever that picture. Oh, uh, Arwen. Arwen. Yes. We, Arwen. No, that you, picture. You know, I, I made it. I, well, you know, I remade it. It's. You know, I, well, I know what it is. Oh, I know what it is. I'm wondering, do, did you know that it's sitting in the center of the White House, that picture? Dead center of that oval, uh, it, there's a picture. And in that picture, dead center is that. Did you know that? What exactly, like what I put up? The, the, or that just map the map. Is oh. dead, the, the map. Actually, okay. the whole map. <laughs> but, not just, okay, if they actually not, put not that just picture little... literally there, then I would be like really freaked out. But uh... <laughs> no, but take, like take my a look icon. next time. Next... No, no, no. They they got. I don't forget what the name of that picture is, but it's dead center of the White House uh, oval thingy, like the oval part of the White House. Uh, oh. There's a picture. And it's got a white. And if you look at that picture, you will see the whole map. Dead center. Did you know you that? Any I guess you didn't of know that? that. Of that, yeah. So that's how important that is. If a if a globalist says, you know, that your map is utter BS, tell them that some yachts put a dead center of the White House, the most satanic building in the most satanic city going. You know? Okay, that's not really a. Well, helpful. did you know? The, well, no, but they are trying to hide the fact that it's flat. I mean, isn't all it of is. Washington D.C. built like, like pentagrams and all types of weird? Yeah, it's got yeah, it's pretty all, much like the everything. Monoliths and all it. that. Exactly, it's all <laughs> yeah. Masonic, all Masonic architecture. The place is riddled. The yeah. streets outlined in owl. Exactly. It's crazy. Where's the owl actually outlined? That one I don't know. Uh, you can find it on a map like a Google Earth. Just look around. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know you. north, south? Do you have like a rough idea to boo in? I uh, don't know, but I have looked at that myself before. Okay, I'll oh. look in. That's that, that sounds pretty cool actually. But I don't know yeah, about the I, owl. But I, I know the White House is like in the middle of a panic pentagram or something. Like crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The like pentagram the they monument. Got the, they got actually they got more than one pentagram. They got a pentagram, they got a hexagram. 
uh, and they all touch in all special places, like as far as like key monuments and shit goes. Yeah. So, so, so basically, so, so dead center of the White House is the biggest lie they're trying to hide. Or at the time, maybe it was the biggest lie. They haven't gone, or did they go to the moon then, by then? They never went to Actually, the moon. Actually, no, they have, they, they didn't go to the moon. So that's literally <laughs> the biggest lie. No, that they was the biggest cool. lie that they were blobbing back then was this. They, so they put it dead center. I'm pretty sure that if the White House was built after the moon, there would have been something in there to represent a moonshot too. I'm sure the White House would love to. Well, <clears throat> and now back to some Dragon Ball Z explanation. Hey, Nami, how are you doing? Hey, Nami. No. This is, oh. this is about flat Earth. It's not about Dragon Ball. Lots of people joining. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Hello. Did Hello. anybody see this morning? Sci Strike had a had a live uh, video about uh, Quantum Arrays' uh, presentation last night. Did no. anybody see that? No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think the the video is still rendering. And they were all bashing over his presentation. It was pretty, pretty, pretty funny. Even Red Rhetoric was uh, attending. So I, I, I thought that was funny. That's excellent. They didn't have, they didn't have really uh, good arguments. They were just going over the text and uh, continuously stopping and, 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 and going over that. It was really funny. Hey, P. Mars, how are you doing? Can't hear anything to me. Oh, looks like half the panel's been kicked. <laughs> That's quick. <laughs> or maybe the phones are out. I'll bring oh, some of our guests back in on uh, Skype. So, you, Ranty, how are you doing? It is. Hello. Good to have you. Just get some of our guests back it on is. Skype. It won't be a second. Yeah, P Mars removed everybody. May not have been P Mars. Well, that's still the here. He has removed Arwin, Mark Smiler, and Stephen Chester from the Hangout. Yeah, but it might not right? actually be him. Am I still here? You're still here, Betty. Oh, okay. Nominum's back. <clears throat> yeah, it won't be P Mars. It'll be obviously the person we shall not mention. Yeah, you can't rule P Mars out. He has been known to do um, snipe frequent a lot in the past. Yeah, I don't think he's been like that recently, though, has he? No, he tends to snipe no, he's when he's pissed off with somebody. And to be fair, he he took too many people too quickly. It's that um, key, um, what's it called? It's like a keypad thing that they've got like a program and they can set it up to automatically take people out, move your cursor and everything. Script. Yeah, yeah. The only way like the, a macro the they've got. P-Mars was able to even do that was because we thought it was the real P-Mars and we just let him in because he doesn't get in anywhere else because of the Sean Hubbard thing. And I know that Nathan's not got a potential issue with him, so he was just given a, a few more seconds and then in that time, snipe, snipe, snipe. Yeah, I, I like can tell it's the, You can tell it's a macro because he takes the the top person out, the first in the list, so it begins with the A. That's why Arwen always gets sniped out first because his name begins with A. So he's at the top of the list. Unlucky so Arwin. the macro that they set off automatically moves, the, changes screen. It will press click in a certain area, which is the top person's name, whoever that is. And because Arwen is always at the top with an A, it will just be he's the one that gets eliminated. I'm the next one down, the next one down. No, Randy, it's because I'm the most important one, you know that. Change your name to Zarwin. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll call myself Zarwin. Yeah. So, so Betty, it seems that um, John struck a nerve then. So, sorry. John has struck a nerve. Uh, yeah, and so quick. <laughs> this morning, uh, I think I, I woke at seven o'clock. It's a little bit later or earlier than your uh, time. <laughs> they were already at it, so that was really funny. Excellent. Oh, I'm so chuffed. <laughs> if you're over the target, target, you get black, and that's what that is. So, 
Well done, John. Uh, and I didn't have a really good argument, so that was really funny. <laughs> just, just... Jesse, what are you talking about? Um, there was a, a, a live stream from SciStrike, and he had the presentation up from uh, Quantum Eraser yeah, last, for, um, last, uh, last night. And they were going over it, uh, rule by who, who rule, the, sentence by sentence. Who was, who was the Hangout guy? Was it Slice Back In? Is that the one you're referring to? No, SciStrike. Um, SCI and STRI, I believe. Oh, right. Slice Strike. I noticed yeah. there was a comment from uh, Slice Barcane in, uh, in the chat. Did you catch it, Nathan? I put a copy of it in the side chat. It reads <clears throat> Pity, no flat earther was in the chat by name, was interested in seeking scientific fact on Thursday. Congrats, Nathan, you have your own little flock. Look, he's put that same message about 50 times, right? He's. He's really struggling to try and get a reaction. And the fact that you've actually mentioned it proves that we shouldn't have really even mentioned it because he is known to lie. He is known to... Um, he knows it's a ball. He tells everyone it's... He, he knows it's flat and he knows it and he tells everyone it's a ball. The guy's not stupid. The yeah, guy but you forget. Cad. He's, he's called Nathan out, you know, time and time and time and time again. Uh, to try and say that none, none of the flat earthers took part in his experiment, right? But the fact that you've actually acknowledged him, <laughs> you know, it's kind of giving him some credence. I wouldn't have even acknowledged him. No, I, I like on. acknowledging Sly because I like I like giving a one way echo chamber nonsense against him because the guy knows that the Earth is not a ball. Well, have, yeah, he it, tells everybody it is, and he's had his nice stamp of approval. He would have had show. misrepresents evidence to suit he, the. He would have had our participation and stamp of approval. If it had presented a hypothesis, and instead he rage quit. He doesn't know what a hypothesis is. Then what? You, what do you expect from him if he doesn't know it? He did actually say he would produce the hypothesis once he'd done the experiment, which was, you know, <laughs> ludicrous. Yeah, you had to laugh at that. I'll do step um, four and then do step two afterwards. Yeah, yeah, get the results in, get everything done, and then formulate a hypothesis. He's a pretender clown. Welcome to the Ball Earth Circus. Sly Sparkane being the chief clown. <laughs> Honestly, I think Anthony's right. I think some of these big globers, I think they actually do know that the, the Earth is flat. They just, they're just pretending for some reason. Like, it's like they don't want to lose credibility or something. I, I, don't, I don't get it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a whim and tell you the people that I think know definitely that it's not a ball. Flat Earth Math knows it's not a ball. Sly knows it's not a ball. Um, Red's Rhetoric probably believes that it is a ball because he loves NASA that much that he would completely accept it if if they said it was square. But um, Flat Earth Math and, and Sly definitely know. Sean? I'm not sure about Sean. Sometimes I think he does. Sometimes I don't think he does. But a lot of these guys do realize it. But the other guys are just brainwashed. It's it's, it's an extreme behavior. You either realize and push the narrative anyway, or you're indoctrinated so much so that you can't possibly suggest that you can't possibly digest the possibility it might not be. So there are some real victims. But I do think some of them definitely do know. Anthony, can I ask, <clears throat> Anthony, can I ask you what is it about? Um, Flat Earth math that makes me think that he knows it's a ball. I'm just curious. Well, have you ever have you ever spoke with him? Did you know the guy I'm on about? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's he, he has this smiling, giggling kind of persona that you can't really you can't really hate. But yeah. that's his mo. He, he's like he's killing you with kindness, kind of thing. I, I don't believe that's Hello, a genuine. Hello? Okay. So it's not like some. I thought it might have been based on something like how he, what he argued. Or... No, it's to do with the style that they use. Um, oh. I dare you right now, live. Look up on Google, blind test science. I double dare you. Yeah, I just okay. did that. So... I just looked that up, and whoop de doo. It's it's basically an experiment that to exclude bias by being blinded. All that. I don't see how that is related to cosmogony in any type of way. Ah, uh, he wants you to read out the definition so he can claim that that's what he was doing. I'm guessing. Go on, read out the definition. What's it say? A blind or blinded experiment is an experiment in which information about the test is masked, uh, capped from the participant to reduce or eliminate bias until after a trial outcome is known. 
of tester and subject are blinded, the trial is called a double blind experiment. Yeah, that's used in testing drugs. That's not <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly. not required for doing uh, tests of and psychology yeah, also, and, also psychology. And the thing like, is, you can't, uh, weird colored food and just yeah, if you're blinded, you don't care. Uh, and you just it. go by and the be honest, but if you I've see done, it, then the minute it's like. I've done double blind it, tests. It kind of so, tells you it's sorry blind. to interrupt. Sorry, Ranty. So a double blind test. I've actually I've done these. You have to do them when you're selling hi fi to people. And essentially, what you'd do is you'd wire up a stereo, and you'd wire up another stereo next to it on a on a on a box, and then you would have someone else actually perform the test and switch the switch between the two boxes. And the person who comes in is from their view they can't see anything, so it's a darkened room, or you've got a sheet in front of whatever equipment you're playing them. And basically, what you're listening to on one system is then contrasted with what you listen to on another system. But you have no idea which one is which. So you're not your judgment isn't clouded by which one's more expensive or which one's got a particular brand name. You're just listening. So it's blind in terms of what equipment you're listening to. But ultimately yeah. speaking, somebody at some stage the, has to set up that test and has to know exactly what they're setting up and how they're setting it up. You know, it might be the case that the person that even administers the test doesn't know what they're actually showing the participant but the person who's doing the test in this case sly absolutely needs to know what the test is and must have a <laughs> hypothesis you can't double blind test as an examiner you're basically the blind leading the blind then sly you idiot it is a, it's a comparison technique to compare two things always that's what it's for yeah, it's like the Coke versus Pepsi test, right? Yeah, exactly. Product, Hi, hello. product, Hi. Uh, hello, Aaron. Oh. Product quality, that Good type of thing. I'm, su I'm surprised he cites that it's the blind whatever thing he test he said it was, because ultimately it's kind of like by identifying it as Sly Spark Ains test, you kind of know where the bias is going to be heading, right? Hmm. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, it's, yeah, that wouldn't be the appropriate use of a double blind test. So it just shows that he doesn't understand the scientific method even more than he already. I could think of a funny, uh, this is a joke, by the way, a, a double blind experiment. And that is put, put a blindfold on onto a participant, let them walk over a flat table and let them walk on a ball. Let's see if they notice oh. the difference. <laughs> Whole hangout's been sniped, so I'll have to start a new one. Maybe a minute. Oh. Okay. I'll just rejoin in the panel, okay? Uh, yeah, if you want to, that'd be good. I'll sure. stick the... Um... Then I can also watch the back door again. That's cool. So, so see you there. I'll stick it in um, Skype. I gotta take off anyways. Take care, Nathan. Good to have you, Stephen. It's nice chatting to you. It's a, a rare occurrence, yeah. and it's uh, very nice to have you on. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, peace. Welcome to the show. Don't know. No, you don't know. Right, it's in Skype for anybody who wants to rejoin. Hey, Nami, how you doing? Good. More sniping. <laughs> well, I don't actually know how to do it myself, if I'm honest, because I've got no need to. Um, basically removing somebody from the call. That's all sniping is. Oh, yeah. No, I said more, more sniping. Oh, more? I thought you said what's sniping. Shout out to Chris MCM. Indeed. There we go, Owen. Hey. Hello, Hello. Betty. Hello. Um, I'll give it 10 minutes before I stick the link out again for a second time. Hello? Hello. Hey, Ranty. And there's some feedback happening. Yeah, it's Hello. just because as soon as you join, that'll happen. It'll dissipate. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it was going. the fake or rave that took us out. Oh, he did actually man. say hello. I just thought the voice was a bit deeper than normal, but I thought, nah, worth the risk. <laughs> <laughs> and the back of background noise, our rave always sounds like he's like, like in the middle of like an industrial complex. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> I could have been in a car. But that... 
I haven't. Yeah, I haven't heard much from our the real RA in a t in some time now. I'd get him in on Skype in a heartbeat, but I just don't have him. I've asked him to email. I can add him to my Skype Skype contacts. Yeah, I credit him loads. I mean, admittedly, you echoed it, but the first person to explain why we have that zone that is invisible in in these debates, admittedly, I'd have the explanation many times before from other flat earthers, but certainly to have it contextualised with the observation of the Isle of Man, the first person to do that was Arif. And he did an exceptionally good job. Yeah, he did it by hand in paint, and it didn't look nice, but it explained it perfectly. Yeah, I like that guy. He's, he's a big fan of Robotham, and a lot of Robotham's works very good. Mm -hmm. Synthetic mm -hmm. astronomy, you know, check it out. You know what I've noticed in um, the whole FE debate? There's a, a load of um, misinformation on both sides, and it gets to the point where you end up asking yourself, what is the actual truth? And I, I mean, obviously, you have to work out what you think is the most credible of, of the evidence. But there is the position that you realize that you get to at some point, and you may skim over it in seconds and make the decision. But the reality is there is misinformation and disinformation on both sides, mostly on the ball earth side. But there are the odd flat earth ones that I do see that confuses stuff. But it's difficult to work, work out what is the truth. And no one really knows unless you start doing the work yourself. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that the bowlers won't do that. They don't go out and it, to be fair, if they, did, if they went out and did these things, it did probably become flat earthers within a few weeks, you know, because they'd be saying, well, I shouldn't really see this and I shouldn't really expect to see that. Why am I seeing this? You know, and all they see is other people presenting it. But when you see it firsthand, you know, especially if you live on the coast and stuff, you can you can easily. I I think everyone on the coast pretty much knows that, you know, it isn't what we're told. Uh, but if you live inland, I mean, places like America, where it's you could be, what, 150 miles away from the coast, maybe they have a, or they live in a built-up area. Maybe they don't get to experience what we do. You know, which is the freedom to go to the coast and see this stuff. I mean, I mean, I wonder how many people in the chat actually do live in big cities and never really get to go out of the city. Yeah. I'm one of them. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, right that's, you that's why I don't own a telescope. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah over my life, I have been uh, able to look at the coast or, yeah, on the coast. Uh, it, C word. So I have been looking at the Atlantic Ocean a couple of times, and yeah, it looks all very flat. And yeah, the whole refraction zone thing and the slant. It really, when you just take any presumptions away, the first thing that I would interpret it at, and even looking at the background image that Nathan uses right here, it just seems like it's. A flat plane and then it's cut off like there's an edge that's just the very first impression you get and it's also what the reflection of the sun basically suggests like it's cut off but it's a mystery as to what is behind there and yeah when you go up it's down to the mystery. camera then you get to see what is actually there how it's changed but that's just how it looks like well you got to ask yourself is it a mystical properties of water because Let's face it, Jesus turned water into wine, and uh, it's, it appears now that water is appearing to turn the ball into a, into a flat plane. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's mystical properties of water. Well, then, um, in that case, sand has the same mystical properties, because there's plenty of very, very flat deserts that even, yeah, indeed. provide even further sight. But, Indeed, yeah. Salt. But the weird thing about water is is this slant effect that seems to be pretty unique about water, which probably has to do with its moist properties. Because in deserts, it doesn't it rarely has the same level of effect, and it's of course due to the sunlight uh, hitting 
the dirt or the, the sand and then giving off much more heat in comparison to the water that spreads out the heat. It absorbs it and spreads it around a lot more. So yeah, that will give a different type of air density and heat release. But I think that is mostly the unique property of the ocean that you get to see this very specific style slant. Anthony's been doing some good observations with some boats. He wants to have a chat about that. Yeah, yeah give me five know, minutes. A good idea. A lot of you what, sorry? I was just saying, give me a couple of minutes because I'm um, the dogs are going out for a walk, you know, because that's what cruel animal owners do. They let, take the dogs out for walks and stuff. So while they're transitioning from the uh, the dogs that are coming back to the dogs that are going out, uh, we just gotta I've got to mute for a minute. But it's going to get excited. No oh, is Mickey not going out? Oh, we're going then. So back to the anti-flat earth hangout that uh, Red was on. Maybe we'll see yeah. some of Red. Sorry, what did, what did you say? Maybe we'll actually see some of Red at some stage on the debates. <laughs> Well, he called uh, Quantum Eraser out again, so <laughs> that could be the case. Your, your, nice, mic, nice your mic's see. roboting, Betty. I don't know if you want to drop and rejoin, maybe. Uh, yes, I will. But what are they calling him out on? I, I don't really get what's the problem, because well, there was a comment very yesterday. precise with, with everything he... Well, there was a comment yesterday that said that he's been harping on about this for two years, Hello? right? Hello, and I made a better. comment. Much better, much better. Okay. That's which good. basically said, well, if you've had two years listening to, to him harp on about these things, and you've still not been able to refute any of the things that he's coming up with, why, why is it such an issue for them? Why do they need to throw out pass away comments that are like, oh, he's been going on about this for two years? Well, so what if he's repeating himself? Because he is basically drilling it into them. We want someone to come come on the panel and tell us where he's do, where he's going wrong because from where I'm seeing he's he's got some very good points. I've I've encouraged him to but repeat himself. He's so got he got has great points. Sorry, go on, Betty. He's got great points. There's there's nothing wrong with with the explanations that he gives, uh, but people misunderstand or they try to derail the the whole conversation with with obfuscations and 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 non points. And and you see that in in the in the forums where he posts and and if you see the responses that people give, it's nonsense. It's totally nonsense. And they're just trolling and and they have no arguments uh, to get back at him. So they they try to insult and and all the other things that they do. Yeah, exactly. He, if he's been going on about it for two years and they've still not uh, found a way to combat his argument, why is it such a derogatory thing for, to bring up and say, well, he's been going on about it for two years? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's well, because I have a theory. Maybe until it's proven wrong. Maybe it is just that they really, really don't get it, and they're basically bullying him like the nerd. Yeah, that and type it, of setup. They more... just don't get it, so they just hate him, yeah. and they're not gonna, yeah, actually get into the material and just bully him, bully him, basically, and try to ignore also. I think they, th they think if they say something like that, it's going to um, sort of downplay what he's actually saying. So that if somebody else is hearing this for the first time and they're reading comments like that of such, uh, they're going to try and, you know, think, oh, well, this guy must be off his rocker then if these people are slagging him off. And that's all they have is um, this kind of retort rather than coming on the panel and saying, right, OK, he's done this wrong or this isn't right or this is incorrect. And for two years we've been doing this, you know, we're waiting, we're still waiting. Nathan's but, asking for scientific proof, we're still waiting. But they they know in. he's right, he, they know that he's right, but they have yeah. arguments against him. And then they have to say that he's wrong, and they continue to say he's wrong, he's wrong, and other people parrot that, and then you have an whole community parroting that he's wrong, without looking at the evidence or, uh, or at, at the things that he's presenting. Well, they do that anyway, don't they? Yeah. They claim that something's been debunked. So let's yeah. suppose um, Good Sims for All, he did a, a hangout yesterday um, and he was seeing the Toronto skyline from 35 miles away um, and he was seeing very 
much more of the Toronto skyline than you should do if we live on a ball. Now, if somebody comes in the chat and says, oh, it's been debunked already, you know, and then within 10 minutes, everybody's saying it's been debunked. The fact it doesn't have to be debunked, it's just Chinese whispers. You know, somebody makes, says it's been debunked, and then everybody seems to cotton on to the fact that it might have been debunked. Utter rubbish. Yeah. But simply say it's it's false. It, it's it's not good. It, it's it's false. I had that on yeah. Geo Strieber's uh, hangout that I had with him, and I I got him on on the on the ear force effect. And uh, afterwards he said, "Oh, that's false," and then he went on. <laughs> it's just false. <laughs> that's how I got to know who you were because of the uh, Geo Strieber hangout, and you absolutely smashed him. But he, <laughs> he's too stupid to realise that he lost, which of course yeah. is the definition of the Dunning Kruger syndrome. He does not realise that he lost that hangout. You won that hangout, but he, he thinks he won it because of reasons. But ultimately, he lost and doesn't realise it. And that's kind of terrible on his count. Yeah, but also the, the people that follow him, they, they have the same thing going on. So they, they, they cheer him on and, and they don't know who they're cheering on. <laughs> they simply don't uh, think for themselves. That's the thing. Well, you know when Ranty just said then that sometimes they pass it off as though it's been debunked, they also do the same with regards to the explanations for stuff that's totally contradictory. No. Like when we see a lighthouse at 30 miles away that we shouldn't even see, and they go, oh, it's just a refraction. It's just a little bit of non-standard refraction. And the minute they say something that sounds plausible, reasonable, something that sounds a little bit scientific with a posh name, they all just sit there we're holding each other's willies going, yeah, that sounds good to me. That We'll have that. And then that's it. And then they're Ed. That's considered gone, and I'm like, <laughs> well, look Duh. at Brenda yesterday. Look at Brenda trying to say that it was gravity. It was gravity. <laughs> yeah, that's why she got kicked. It never Didn't said even, gravity. Didn't even it never have the word gravity mentioned gravity at all. I think it mentioned gravity in the document seven times, but in the first line, she was claiming that it was talking about gravity because it was a vertical, and I'm like, true vertical, and I'm like, what are you talking about? How she made the connection to gravity from true vertical, I do not know. Well, that's the thing. She'll she'll portray this and she'll say this, and some of the thick holes in the chat will believe it, and then they'll start palming that off and telling other people in different chats that uh, Brenda was able to destroy the gyroscope argument, um, blah 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 blah, and it'll all become Chinese whispers and it'll muddy the waters again. You know, rather than being honest and having a proper debate, they can't do that. Or they, you know, another prime example is they claim that there's the Coriolis effect, but also that the atmosphere is spinning with the Earth. Yeah, that's They're a great totally one. contradictory <laughs> positions. Yeah. Right? When it suits them, then there's the Coriolis effect. But when it when it doesn't suit hey, them, Rufus, then the uh, ridiculous. Hey, Ruhif, can you hear us? Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm just no, about to put really the link out, problem. so. Just so you're aware. No, I'd probably um, get trolled to Anthony just sent it to me anyway. How late is it that you're uh, with? Uh, 11.44. I'm going to bed in 16 minutes. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. <laughs> as soon as a late it, uh, night debate. Night. Late night debate. Oh, yeah. Debate. I was up pretty late last night, so I talked to Anthony as well. Um, I had a question for you, actually, Owen. Um, really? Yeah. What's what it? is it that compels you to think that the you know the stars and the moon and the sun are intangible rather than tangible. So not not a question of whether you don't know, but what compels you to think that they're not tangible. Uh, several factors. Um, well, uh, for one, uh, the the actual observations and proof. Dare I say, probably not, but just the conclusion that the earth indeed is flat with measurements with elaborate research and but this at the same time that there's like a celestial body like the sun for example uh, goes under at a at a constant angular speed it doesn't decrease that's one of the things uh, another factor is is strange sightings of for example the moon Hello. Uh, Hello. when you go when you go high up, the high footage, uh, high balloon footage, it's very great indicator. Stars going away, uh, just the weird positioning of the moon 
uh, and the sun, whatever it does, it just doesn't correlate with any sighting of physical objects at all. It's all that footage, everything that I've seen in the last couple of years of all the high balloon footage was just really cool. Hello. Hey, Lewis. All right. Can, can you be more specific uh, next hangout? Like Sorry? actually, you know, bring a, bring a link next time to which balloon footage you say doesn't show stars and that sort of thing. <sighs> yeah, look, I'm yeah. not going to put an entire collection out there. It's just, I've seen so many, so many things. Hmm. And, but for starters, every footage of the super, every footage high up has no stars. All of it, even the footage that NASA actually uses, even the SpaceX oh, cool. footage, all of it. Yeah, but you've, no you've heard the explanation for that, right? Hmm? You've heard the explanation for that. Yeah, like it's to do with exposure, right? It's ridiculous. That's um, that's anyway. technically impossible. It is a science fiction explanation. Can you bring a link to tomorrow's hangout, like to one of these uh, videos, to one of these videos that you say um, demonstrates your point? Uh, or message me on Skype whenever you get one. Either way. I'd have to dig back, but uh, yeah, sure, I'll. I uh, know, oh, but you did I say that they it. all show it. Well, look, you can search for it, but there's a lot of footage out there. So mm -hmm. to actually find exactly what I'm looking for is not going to be that easy now, because okay. there's just so much stuff out there. Hey, Brenda. It's not going to be exactly what I'm looking for. Yes. Hello. Hello. Did someone take out Louis? That was Ellen. Louis yeah, Hackett. Anthony's by yeah. accident. Feel free to rejoin Louis. I have said to him in chat, I removed him accidentally. It was when um, somebody else joined and I clicked the link and clicked remove, not realizing that it had moved because somebody else had already done it. Someone else just. Troll attack. Okay, he's back. Hello again. Hello, Louis. Oh. Is it Louis or Louis? It's Lewis. Train tracks, uh, they don't lay on a curvature, period. Uh, oh, that's got... a fake, Betty. <laughs> it's a tape recorder again. Yeah, that was fantastic. Richard Bailey. Oh, come on, Pete. Hey, he's got a camera. Well done. Yeah, we're under, we're under attack. That's around about 15 that I've got rid of in the last 30 seconds. Was Richard real? Yeah, yeah Richard had his camera on. I didn't see the camera, but it wasn't me that removed it. I didn't see a camera. I saw it on the screen. <laughs> that doesn't on the other hand, let's face it, when there's about 20 trolls all joining at once, you just... bad timing, Richard, yeah, sorry. Last try, Lewis got accidentally yeah, removed him as I clicked on him and clicked remove, and Lewis happened to be in the way. You're, you're really quiet, Anthony. I don't know if you've moved a million miles from your mic, but you're all over yeah, sorry, the Sorry, I had to... Am I back? Uh, yeah. Who's that? Johnson? Just trolls. Troll. We know all these Either names. One. We know all these people. Are you there, Lewis? Yeah. Did you catch my message in chat? Uh, no. I was just explaining that I accidentally removed you when about three people all joined at once and Ranty removed the one person I was removing. And unfortunately, you, got, you took the guy's place and I didn't realize and sniped you accidentally. So I apologize. Sure, champ. Thanks. <laughs> Second day on the run, it seems like it's a conspiracy, I'm sure, but it's genuinely a mistake, so don't be thinking uh, anything weird. No, just general judgments on how you could be more prudent. <laughs> well, it wasn't a judgment. The judgment call was right, but the uh, unfortunately, the guy moved. See, Jim Benson's just moved now, and if I click remove, then he goes. But if Ranty does it first, Jim Benson removes, and then you replaced him, and I thought it was Jim Benson, and then it is what it is, so... I just wanted you to know it wasn't a conspiracy against you. Yeah, it was, done it, twice. it was no no that was in. And because he's with the L and the N, you know, it's all close. <sighs> right, we just got to wait for Chris to get bored. Chris MCM? Yeah. Shout out to Chris MCM. Shout out. Love it. <laughs> for probably Nathan actually is it your understanding 
that quantum eraser hey, says chocolate. that the shape oh, of the earth cannot be answered scientifically. Oh. I don't think I've ever asked him that specific question. Hmm. It's the vibe hear? I get from his presentation. Yeah, we can hear you, okay. chocolates. Good to have cool. chocolate. Sorry, can you repeat your question, Ru? I was distracted. Sorry. Uh, so, Quantum Erase's presentation, do you think he is saying that the shape of the Earth cannot be determined scientifically? I would I would say that statement. It works as, get, as much against a flat Earther as it does against a globe Earther. But if you agree with him, will you stop asking for scientific proof? No. 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 Why? Because science. Because Rumpus says that the whole body of science agrees with him. Well, I would agree with that statement as well. Right. So, what's wrong with asking for scientific evidence of it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, evidence. Evidence. Yes. Okay. So. Great. Where's your evidence? We got some. Uh, I've got eight minutes, so I don't really want to get into it tonight. But I mean, we can continue the whole different way to different latitudes if you like. The at boss effect? Uh, not necessarily at boss, but we can... That's like the, the second part of that argument, yeah. You do realise that Betty destroyed GeoStreamer on that exact point, like, about a week ago? Have you seen that hangout? No. How you did sure? Betty destroy Geo? Don't look at GeoStreamer's hangout and watch that ha that chat with Betty. <laughs> it's glorious. Yeah, that's that's uh, unlikely, unless it takes about six minutes. <laughs> Well, What's well the point that, you that, 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 that took so, about six minutes, I suppose. But, <laughs> but what you was like your argument? Talk, you like the talking clock. I, I wanted to ask him, uh, that Jewish dreamer, what is his hypothesis? The uh, observed phenomenon that he did, that he made, and how did he construct the hypothesis? And he showed me a graph. Hmm. And he back engineered from the graph the EOT effect. And, and, the it was effect. So that was totally wrong. People, um, most people try to back engineer from a, uh, from a mathematical form to um, to the natural world. World, that's not possible. Uh, that, that happens in practice. I mean, it's not technically the correct way of things. To, you know, correct way of doing it. Exactly. But it happens. Yeah, but You're that mystical makes it not scientific, right? Uh, you can reverse engineer it. I'm sure it happens a lot. In, in papers. Sure, but you could say murders happen, that's just life, couldn't you? Murders happen, that's just life. Mm. Right. Does <laughs> yeah. it make it right, though, does it? No. Exactly. But does it change the outcome? No. But what, what was your main point against him, Betty? Well, he couldn't construct an hypothesis, a valuable hypothesis. Yeah, and he couldn't, so... he couldn't vary the independent variable. Exactly. His d direction of travel, isn't that the independent variable? Direction and speed of travel. So, so the, construct the cause the of the boss then. effect. Sorry, what, what? just to clear that up. So the direction of travel is the cause of the at boss effect, is it, Ruhif? Direction. There's a correlation between the direction and speed of travel and the weight. So let's hear your hypothesis. Yeah. Well, do you accept that the direction of and speed of travel is uh, manipulatable? Sure. So, and that proves the Earth is flat or round. Or has this uh, centrifugal uh, force? Evidence to support, yeah, it's evidence to support the spinning, yeah. Yeah, but that's the dependent variable. You can't no, the change weight, the spin of the, the earth, can't you? Can you? Oh, I didn't say that. I did not say that was my independent variable. I said yeah. the no. direction and speed of travel. But that's what you wanted to prove, right? Yeah, my, my model is that it's a spinning globe, and the prediction of that model is that if it's I... Sorry, straight into uh, models. Includes... Sorry, we, we were doing so well, Ruhif. Now we're talking about mm. a model, not the natural world. Not something you can vary or observe in the natural habitat that that model exists in, because it's a model. Yeah. Well, you we're talking not. about science, and science is a study of the natural world, not models. Do you deny that models can be used scientifically? Yeah, they're not natural phenomena that you are observing. It's a model. So yeah, it's back to murders and it's just life, right? We can just use models, and in practice people do use models. That's the problem. In practice, you use a model, and it's not scientific in the slightest. What's your observed well, phenomenon? Your oh, it's negative. my model that I've created. Like a lawnmower no, that you've that created. Is, my hypothesis is a model that makes predictions. Right. <laughs> First, you have to prove the model, then. <laughs> no. 
My model is my hypothesis. And my model <laughs> makes model. predictions. A model is not a cause and effect relationship. That's what a hypothesis is. <laughs> Listen, from my model, I can make predictions. Yeah, that's from making, my hypothesis middle, that's making a globe. prediction based on your model, not on the real world, Ruhif. We're not talking about models, yeah. we're talking about the world and whether it spins. Not whether or not your model spins. No, we're <laughs> talking about hypothesis. Yeah, okay, and a hypothesis, what's the normal hypothesis establishes a cause and effect relationship with the phenomenon that you're observing. So what's the cause of your phenomenon? What is the cause? Yeah? And if you're going to say my model, that's my hypothesis because my model shows this cause. That's nonsense. It's not science. So to answer your question, absolutely not. It's not science. You say models are not science. No. It's not an observed phenomenon. Well, you're, you're it's not idiot. an observation in the natural world. It's not a cause and effect relationship. It's not a hypothesis. It's not an experiment. It's a model. <laughs> like a lawnmower. <laughs> exactly. If I get some Lego, I want to make a model. Does that make me a scientist? Yeah, apparently it's a. Does apparently your model so make predictions? No. Who cares if it can make a prediction? It's a model. It's not the real world. If it makes predictions. So we what? Can test those so can Mystic Meg? Program. Is Mystic Meg scientific? Mystic Meg, is she scientific because she can make predictions? It's a computer program that's programmed by humans. Let's go to the circus, right, and go to somebody with a crystal ball because they can make predictions, right? So they can make predictions can like your model can make predictions. Absolutely. So Mystic Meg and the people at the circus, they're scientific, are they? Because they've got predictions. Yeah, let's test them. Right, with the scientific method. That's what we're doing sure. right now. And what you're doing is saying, let's test my model. No, we're talking about the world. The real world. Let's test the predictions of my model. No, let's not test the predictions of your Lego model. <laughs> or your lawnmower, for that matter. We're interested in the natural world, not your lawnmower or your model. How is my model not a representation of the, the I don't care world. what it represents. <laughs> Where's your model at, then? What model is? Give, give show a us. citation of your model, idea. Let's see your Where can I find it? Oh, it was it, uh, was it <laughs> Anthony... <laughs> No, there's observable facts that contradict your model. Too many people no, talking. Nami Nam, what is the observable fact that contradicts the model? Well, for one, there's no, uh, there's, uh, the atmosphere would have to be spinning with the earth, which it's not. It does. No, it doesn't. And what do you mean how, it doesn't? How, how can that happen? Air is a fluid. It has friction. No, it doesn't have, no, no, no. It has no surface, it has no contact with the surface. It can't just move and lock step with the surface of the earth. Yeah, also, the Coriolis effect oh, contradicts yeah. the idea that the, that the uh, atmosphere is, in lo is uh, spinning in lockstep with the surface of the earth. Here, I'll Google air. the boundary layer effect for you, Nami. Uh, air, sorry, air is a molecule. It has friction. It will spin with the earth. No, actually, gas molecules bombs, so. elastic are subject to elastic collisions with each other, meaning that it's a non-frictional relationship. All right, it's uh, eleven fifty-nine. Nummy, I've sent you a message on Hangouts. Can you please accept my request? I don't know how to do that. To be honest with you, just go to hangouts.google.com. I don't know. I'd rather just have it out here. So just come back tomorrow. We'll talk about it then. Uh, I don't really want to spend uh, time chatting with you. Uh, in private. Well. There's no more Good food. night, everyone. See you, Good night. Yeah, I mean, we've again, we've got a presupposition that the air is um, capable of being dragged, and the Earth is spinning. Therefore, we have a spinning. Therefore, we have a spinning Earth. You know. <sighs> um. So, I'd like to make an observation. The sun goes under the horizon. To explain this observation, I hypothesize that the Earth is a spinning ball orbiting the Sun. One of the predictions that should come true, if my hypothesis is true, is that I should be able to circumnavigate the globe by traveling in any direction for long enough. Does it have to do with the setting of the Sun? Uh, that prediction would come true on a globe Earth. It would not come true on a flat Earth. Sorry, what's your independent variable? 
my independent variable let me think about this for a second oh, you've just given us a hypothesis <laughs> right so a hypothesis right. contains your independent and your dependent variable that's what a hypothesis is so you saying an independent variable kind of makes me think you have no idea what you're doing well i understand that science starts with observing a phenomenon let's and then not you develop go a uh, let's not do a brenda Let's not go through what the scientific method is with us, right? Just tell me what your independent variable is. It's a really simple question. What's the independent variable? Well, that's a really oversimplified way of looking at okay, this. Okay, right. Do you know what an independent variable is? Yeah, it's the variable that won't change based on... Wrong, you moron. It's the cause. So if you're going to say earth turn, right, that's cause. We're establishing cause and effect relationships. You utter retard. Right, so, so like, if you have a X equals Y yeah, equation... Why are you asking me a question? Oh. Why are you asking me something right now? You stupid idiot. What? what? I've asked you what your independent variable is. Tell me, or get out, you idiot. Why? Do you have one? I just told you my hypothesis, dude. Are you, are you deaf as well as stupid? I want to ask... Is I will say it really slowly, right? I'll whisper it into the mic. What is your independent variable, retard? Why are you so mad? I'm not mad. That's why I whispered it, because I pre... I already knew your response, because you are predictable. That's why I whispered it. You're well, not only you stupid and deaf, you're also predictable, Lewis. How did you make that prediction? Because I whispered prior to you saying, why are you angry? You idiot. That's... You are that predictable that I predicted what you were going to do. That's what a prediction is. Well, what did you? What do you predict I'm going to do next? I predict that in the next 10 minutes, I will ask you about five times for your independent variable. And like a complete muppet, you will obfuscate, accuse me of being angry and not actually present an independent variable because you're a retard. Well, I only asked you if you were angry. Don't ask me. Tell me what your independent variable in this sunset is. You idiot! Well, the independent variable is that the sun is going underneath the horizon. Oh my god. No. <laughs> you literally not do not understand variable. the words coming out of your own mouth. You are that stupid. The well, cause. What's wrong with what I said? The cause in your cause and effect relationship. Well, the cause is dependent, right? So there's any number Jesus, of... Jesus, now he's going to start detailing it back to us. For the love of God. Just tell me what your independent variable is, Luke. I just did. No, you didn't. Yes, I What's did. What's the cause? What's the cause? That the, that the earth... See, when you repeat something back to me, it tells me that you don't understand the question and you're having to repeat it to buy a little bit of time because you're stupid. Well, the sun goes... I hypothesize that that is because the Earth is a ball rotating around the Sun. So your independent variable is a rotating Earth, correct? I don't know. That's just how I. No, I know you don't know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you horizon. what your independent variable is. You're a bit vague about it, and we already know the outcome. We already know what your independent variable is, and we already know how to smash you into the next room by telling you, you can't vary Earth spin, you idiot. The sun goes under the horizon. Uh, what you're going to do is now rinse and repeat. So you're now going to spout the exact same shite that I have literally just taken to pieces. You cannot vary Earth spin in your experiment. Earth spin is your cause, therefore your independent variable, and you cannot manipulate it, you idiot. I didn't put forward an experiment. Oh my god. Exactly. You didn't perform an experiment, so it isn't science. Well, I didn't get that far because I got interrupted. Yeah, that, and that's obvious, idiot. Lewis. That's very obvious. You <laughs> it's didn't like get he's that a masochist. Far. He likes being humiliated. Well, if you want me to get that far, we can we can go that far. Okay. Well, you... Hold on. What, what? Let's just get clear. What he's just. A, can we go that far? This is two hundred and three on a flat Earth debate series, and what we are asking for is scientific proof that the Earth is a sphere, something that has been assumed for two 
thousand years. And apparently, the entire body of science is behind. I'm not asking you, Lou, to do a damn thing. I'm asking you to present what 2,000 years of globe earth religion has afforded you in terms of proof of your spinning ball fantasy. And the answer is you've got nothing. You don't even understand how you would present proof. You've no clue. You're retarded. Literally, I you are held back in your cognition. I am the one and only prophet of heliocentrism. Yeah, you're a religious so fanatic. Let's, you know. uh, let's go over this scientific model that I've got here. Right. So Scientific one of... model, a contradiction in terms. Literally, you've got to the first sentence after being tore a new one, you're onto something new and you've literally put forward a contradiction in terms in your first sentence. Oh my God, you are possibly the most stupid person to ever be on this debate, Lewis. One of the things I observe in the world is that the sun goes underneath the horizon. Well done. You can observe things. You've got a set of eyeballs. Well done. So I explain, I explain this observation by postulating that the Earth is a ball. We're not interested in your postulation, you complete retard. We're talking about science. What part of that don't you get? Postulate on a bloody science fiction forum. Yeah, I can postulate that that's actually an eye of a giant dragon. Right. Mm -hmm. You can see the dragon because the eye lights up so much and it just is looking around all day. Well done, Lou, though, Lou, well done night. for illustrating exactly what the globe Earth does. It makes Something an observation else. and then comes up with a little story. That's what you do because you have no scientific evidence to back the assertion you're on a ball. So you have to make an observation. The sun goes below the horizon and then insert a little story because the Earth is a giant spinning ball. Bullshit. Prove it. Yeah, Lewis, science would involve eliminating the other possibilities that could explain the observation as, as being uh, all possible. Right, so, all right, that's cool. So I hypothesize that to explain the sun going underneath the horizon, the Earth is flat and the sun is physically going underneath and up around the other side. Well, you have just trolling. Now he's just being a complete idiot and a moron further by trying to ridicule our position. Yeah, well, it's not going to work. You're not going to succeed here. You're basically the most stupid person on the panel at the moment, and everybody watching knows it. There's 138 people watching who know implicitly that you are completely retarded. You are literally the most dumb person who has ever come on this panel, and we have taken apart your stupid argument. Don't try and make a fool out of the flat earth arguments. You're just pathetic. I don't have to try to do that. Lewis. Lewis. No, can I just say, um, Anthony, can I stop it? Something? Pardon? Could I just say something? Um, his um, argument that the sun goes beyond the horizon. I, I disagree entirely. I have never once seen the sun go beyond the horizon. I've gone it. I've seen it merge into the horizon. I have never seen it once go be beneath the horizon. So let me ask you this, uh, Lewis. Um, Nummy num has stated. Nummy Num has stated before that there's a there's an apparent um, contradiction on the heliocentric model, and I was wondering if if Nummy Num presented to you the contradiction, would you be able to comment on it? Why it's not a contradiction? So Nummy, do you want to make your um, your point to about the Coriolis force? Yeah, sure. I was just saying that the um... oh, hold on for one second. The uh, the idea this. The idea of the Coriolis force contradicts the idea that the atmosphere is spinning in lockstep with the Earth. Just how? to simplify that, right? How does, it con how does it contradict that? Well, so the question is, does the atmosphere spin with the Earth or not? Yeah, I would say so, on a very large part. So then you, you, you reject the concept of the Coriolis force, right? No. Right, but that's where the atmosphere doesn't spin with the Earth. Well, it does. Right, so you reject Coriolis as a thing. Well, that's not what... Coriolis is not where the atmosphere doesn't spin with the Earth. So what, what causes what is the, the Coriolis, Coriolis effect? Well, yeah, it is, because it would imply that... Hang on. The... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. So okay. what's the Coriolis force, Lewis? 
the Coriolis is the difference in rotational velocity, or not, excuse me, it's the difference of the velocity of the Earth as you move further from the equator towards the poles. No, it isn't. Coriolis yeah. force states that as the Earth spins underneath it, a bullet will miss its target because of the spin of the Earth. In other That's words, an effect. That's an effect of the Coriolis. In other words, the Earth is spinning. <laughs> So either the Earth is spinning and the Coriolis force of the atmosphere is spinning with it, or there's a contradiction in terms. Or you haven't understood it properly. No. No, me, John. Say it again to him because I got distracted by the noise. Well, it's if the atmosphere is rotating exactly in lockstep with the Earth, then why would then that would imply that uh, there would be no turbulence. Yeah, then it basically what? comes down to that. If the air, well, if yeah. air would <laughs> spin <laughs> with the Earth, there would be no turbulence effect because of the spin. Hello. Like that the Coriolis effect is this is this conflict between different reference frames, right? Where it's like you've got your reference frame of the rotating Earth, and then the, the non. Oh my God. Non-rotating reference frame of the atmosphere are, are um, not. <laughs> wow! Like, really? You guys have no life? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. So then there's this god. tangent. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Nami, you might as well start over. Gonna, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well done, Al. Is there no way to stop that? No, because he, he keeps on joining. One guy, Chris M C M X C I I I I. Sad. Absolutely sad. Is that, is that who's doing it? Yeah, he's been doing it for about two and a half months since I said he couldn't rejoin. He said he wanted to end the show. And I oh, said, right, oh, sod, fine, guy. sod off, don't ever come back. And now he thinks, he because we won't let him back, he's like, right, well, I'll just in, interfere with the show. It's like the kid that breaks something at a party and deliberately breaks it. And you go, get out of my house. You're not welcome here anymore. And then they come back and they phone prank call pizzas and... You know, basically try and disrupt the people who are cordial and enjoying the party because he's not welcome at the party anymore. So after saying, I'm going to shut down this party and everyone around going, no, we're quite enjoying the party, actually. We'd rather carry on having a party just not with you because you're a complete wanker. But this person would rather keep joining and joining and joining to basically have a little tantrum, throw the dummy out the pram. Sad. You, you definitely have been extremely cordial, Nathan. That's definitely a word I would use to describe your behavior. Uh, maybe you don't understand. I'll do what the fuck I like, including swear, because it's my show. Do you understand that, Lou? Literally, I can break any of the rules. Because it's my show. I run it. So this Chris idiot, he can piss right off. He's not going to get back on, regardless of what he does. And he thinks by trying to employ terror tactics and saying, I'm going to actually try and shut the show down... No worries, it just means I have to tighten up what I do on the show. But he's not going to get back on. You know, he's tried to negotiate with Anthony, saying, I will continue to snipe every single guest on the show until you let me back on. It's like, no, screw you. No, afraid not. Well, maybe we'll get back to the Coriolis. Right, it's like the Coriolis effect uh, claims that, you know, if you fired a bullet that as the earth moves underneath that bullet as it's flying, it's not gonna, it's gonna hit a different location than where you originally aimed at, right? But if the atmosphere right. was moving exactly in lockstep with the earth, that wouldn't happen. So it just implies that there's-, that there's How that, would that not happen? It's the, uh, the bullets moving with respect to the earth. If the air is stationary, then like the bullets just moving through the air and feeling the Coleoris effect and the air is just sitting there. Right. Wait, wait, wait for him to say his whole thing. Why would it I, know, his target, I know it's so. hard to listen to Nummy, but we got why would it oh, miss his No, Nummy, Nummy actually understands at least some physics, as far as I can tell. But I think you're getting a little confused here, because you only feel the Coleoris effect if you're moving with respect to the, the Earth. 
So it's the centrifugal awesome. force itself, the actual force of light think? that's causing that to happen? Is that what no, you're no, saying? No, it's, no, it's because you're moving with respect to the Earth. You don't feel a cold hey, force. Look, either it is actual matter being displaced by the centrifugal force, or it is the centrifugal force. Which one is it? So, Philip, no, it's you, a, it's a different thing. I mean, if you if you actually oh. work out what it is mathematically on a sphere, you get two different forces. There's the centrifugal. Hold force. on, we're back to this. I've just stopped Ruhif doing this. We're talking about what happens on the Earth, and now you're telling me about what mathematically happens on a model. What the hell's going yeah. on? Again, yeah. Oh my god. What do you mean, so oh my you god? In... Don't blaspheme, right? You have just said, what happens mathematically on my model, blah, 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 blah. We're not interested, right? We want to know whether or not the Earth rotates and whether or not the air is being dragged along with it. Not whether or not mathematically you can calculate that. I don't I don't really understand why we're talking about models. Who gives a crap what happens on a Lego model? Hey, I just want to know what causes what the actual law? effect in, say, a bullet to deviate. Is it a centrifugal force, the force, the actual force of the spinning, or is it the matter, the air, well, being displaced force by a mathematical this force? Concept, no, so I don't care about the math. It is. It's a mathematical concept. I, oh, We're not talking so about it's complete... math. We're talking about the real world, Arwen. Yeah, that's hey, what I'm asking. About I'm asking what is we're causing talking, this? What is the cause? Math. The cause, not the math. I'm asking the cause. What is the effect that causes the bullet to deviate? And and not the name for it. What, what is the actual cause? Uh, is it, it the air you displacing? It or is it oh, the force answer. of the center? Nope. Hold on. All right. You, okay. Okay. you want to accept right? the answer anyways because so you want to deny everything. Right. No, let's hear it. What's well, the cause? I've, I've got it. I've got it. All right. So, if you fire a bullet, say, to hold the on, north... Hold on, what are you doing? We, we, Philip is answering. Yeah. Well, I mean, nope. Philip technically interrupted You, you don't me, believe in... You don't believe in we're talking about, so. This is hold not on. about belief. Let's this is about testing clear. the theory. Philip's being asked a direct right. question, and I want to know why you don't want to answer it, then. Why don't you want to tell us what the cause of this is? Nathan, do you agree that Newton's law is a scientific no, 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 law? No, 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 no. I don't want to be asked about what law I agree with. I want to know what the cause is. The cause is being in an, an accelerating reference frame. And so how it do you prove that? Huge. How do you prove no. that? No. How, how do, do I prove that? that? Yeah. By doing experiments. What experiment? By shooting a bullet. So shooting a bullet, that's the observed phenomenon, that the bullet gets shot out of a gun? So take your time, accelerated Philip. Reference frame Hold on, Arwin. You take your time, Philip. Okay. Yeah, I'll take my time. Nathan, I think you know I shut was going to give a very Shut up, Lewis. Lewis, shut your uh, mouth. Response. While we, while we enjoy the silence from off. Philip, shut your mouth, Lewis. Let's just wait for Philip to answer. Well, I mean, it's funny because Nummy and I were talking Right, if about you talk again, I'm going to kick you out, Lewis. Shut your mouth. Philip is being asked a question. Shut your mouth. Wait for an answer. From so Philip. What's the, so what's the phenomena? The phenomena is a bullet doesn't go in a straight line. Right. So is that a natural phenomena? Bullets? Bullets? Yeah, well, bullets I being mean, shot it's, from it's... guns. I'll ask it again because you've repeated it back to me. So yeah, I'm asking if a bullet being fired from a gun is a natural observed phenomena or not. Well, I, if you recall the definition of science, it's natural and physical. So a bullet is a physical thing. Is it natural? No, but let's not get into Hold on, Arwen. Hold on, Arwen. Hold on. This was not about is... scientific proof. Yeah, I is. just we're, want we're to know the cause. Arwen, hold on. We're establishing what Philip's experiment is. Apparently, the observed phenomenon is a bullet coming out of a gun. So, are no, we the now... hold on. Hold on. Are we now going to establish the cause and effect with a bullet coming from a gun? Is that what we're now going to do? And then you're going to tell us at the end that proves the earth spinning? Is that what you're going to do? Because it sounds like we're trying to observe a phenomenon of guns being fired. So there's the the whole idea is that we have a we have a hypothesis which makes predictions, Nathan. Yeah, we can get to that. So far, we're establishing the f observed phenomena. So observed phenomena, bullet, gun, right. nothing to do with earth so far. Right, you know, it's the whole collection of the observations that... Yeah, so we have an observed phenomenon, which is bullet being fired from a gun. The next step would be to formulate a hypothesis, assuming that you don't need to go through any literature review about guns being fired. 
But what's your observed phenomena, phenomena is gun being fired. So are we in the scientific method now going to establish a cause and effect for a gun being fired? Because as far as I can establish, Philip, it's got sod all to do with the earth. Yes, I know, Nathan. You don't see... Excellent. So why the hell are you telling me about guns being fired? We're trying to establish whether or not the Earth spins. Because the Earth spin and shape and motion and everything, it forms a scientific theory. Who cares? It forms an explanation of reality. Don't give a crap. I'm trying to talk about what and, actually happens and, in the real and, world rather than what you theorize and what you model, right? I don't care about your models or your theories. I'm interested in reality, what you can prove with science. So far, I'm talking about a scientific theory, like the one that Quantum Eraser talked about oh. yesterday. Sorry, did you just say theory? Again, yes, yeah. scientific right. theory. Oh right, so on strap on this word, like computer science. Oh. Science being a study of the natural world, computers being things that perform mathematical equations. Oh my equations. god, Nathan, you're you you're really going to flip the definitions on me now? No, just of one word, is. science. Yes. No, 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 no. Science. You know, we had this big long lecture yesterday from Quantum Eraser talking about what a law is what a scientific theory is. And of course, now Nathan's going to use theory in the colloquial sense. That's fine. Mm. Just shows how disbalanced you are, Nathan. Can, can I ask you about, I'd like I want to know what your observed phenomenon is and what here. your hypothesis for that observed phenomenon is. Nathan, What's the Arwen problem? actually wants to understand the Coriolis, so if you could yeah, stop so, trolling, that'd yeah, be great. Philip the Coriolis is an effect, according to you, of the Earth turn, right? So we are talking about the Coriolis. Hello, Brian. How are you doing? Yeah. So All right. Well, you if said, you could just Philip, stop talking and moderate, we can talk to uh, our Right. Hannah how dare you? Get out of my hangout. So, you are literally just a wanker. Piss off, Philip. Uh, not Philip. Louis. Sorry, so, Philip. Philip you, Philip, you said that it was the uh, accelerated reference frame that causes the that so supposedly causes the Coriolis effect. So that an accelerated reference frame. That kind of ports, uh, points that the actual force applied is caused by the rotation, which would be, uh, well, it would be centrifugal force because that is the force that is that comes from uh, rotation, that type of thing. So it is actual force from centrifuge, French centrifuge that is causing the deviation. Right? Sorry, well, I missed that. My original question was, is the Coriolis effect, the deviation of the bullet or whatever it is, caused by air displacement or is it caused by a, a specific force caused from centrifuge? You said it's caused by the accelerated reference frame. So that implies very strongly that it is caused by centrifugal force. No, so but there's more than there's not force just is all about. There's more than one force when you're in an accelerating reference frame. The oh, so what is the uh, what are the other forces that are causing it then in this instant? And how do you oh, um, how do you control Oh wait, the wait, force? please let Philip answer. Right. So if you go to the Wikipedia page for rotating reference frame, they go through a derivation for how you get the fictitious forces acting on an object. So the centrifugal force is this equation right here, the omega cross omega cross r. So did and you if you work out the vectors... Yeah, but can you please be a little bit more specific? Hold on, can you not interrupt him? Formulas. Just let him get you to can't the end of quote sentence. Wikipedia. Oh my god. Hold on, Ranty. Just let what him is get the to other end. force that is this being applied? This is the Coriolis force right here. And how do you control that force? How do I control that force? I change my velocity. No, we said there were other forces. So, what were the other forces that would be causing the uh, accelerated reference frame? Yes, exactly. That's what I. No, want. it's no. If you're in an accelerating reference frame, you feel a fictitious force. That's that's what you. you that's what causes. happens when you're in an accelerating reference. You said frame. That there were other causes, and my question is, how do you control them other forces to neglect neglect negate them so that you you only get the real force that you're observing. So you're saying, how do I actually get rid of the other forces like that? How do you, forces? Yeah, but whatever the other forces that you claim are. What are they? What are the other forces besides the, the, the actual provable force caused by centrif centrifuge that are being applied here? Right. 
I'm telling you that this is the centrifugal force. This right. is the centrifugal force. So what is the other force that comes into play? Oh, hold on one this second. What is, what, what is the centrifugal force? It's omega cross an, omega no, no, no. cross that's an, that's R. That's a number. That's a number. <laughs> No, that is the that's the formula part. But I'm just curious, what is the other force that comes into play? Besides, there is. What do you mean that? What is the other force? You said there were other forces besides centrifugal force that are applied. The Coriolis force is the other force. We know that they're different because so one happens when you're moving, oh one happens when you're so, not. So let me get this straight. We're just going to assume the Coriolis effect is already in effect. So we are literally begging the question here. Well, it is an effect. It is not a force. Like it's it's Very it's it's begging the question you're assuming the what coriolis effect the is already in what, place what right and i'm assuming it but you are you're assuming that it already exists it's in the equation why, right right now nathan what i'm doing is i'm explaining the idea of what the coriolis effect is and where it comes from yeah but you're, you're, the point that i'm making is that you're claiming that there's these two different reference frames right but if the atmosphere was spinning with the earth why are there two different reference frames there aren't there's not. There's only one. There's the reference frame of the Earth, which is then, accelerating. Then you don't have the Coriolis effect. Yeah. Then it's the center. No, that's by definition. No, 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 no. If you're say? in an accelerating yeah. reference frame, you have a fictitious force. No. What does it say on your screen? The time derivative of a position in a rotating reference frame has two components. One from the explicit time dependence due to motion of the particle itself and the and another from the frame's own rotation. Applying the result of the previous subsection mm -hmm. to the displacement, the velocities in the two reference frames, two reference frames are related by the equation that you're mm -hmm. now saying. So this is what I'm saying. One is with respect to an inertial frame and one is with respect to a non-inertial frame. There's a difference. Uh, look, the Coriolis effect in my view is basically something which could be compared to turbulence. Turbulence is not a force, it's also an effect. It's like what results from certain forces being applied. So what I wanted to know is, besides besides centrifugal force, what actual force is being applied? And no, it basically no. comes down to it is centrifugal force, isn't it? But no, Philip, you're, you're claiming that the, if the atmosphere is rotating with the Earth, then it's not a non-inertial reference frame. I mean, that right. it, so, that, so that's what that's the, the, the air is not. But if the air is not moving, the only force it feels is the centrifugal force. Right. Well, that's what and I'm gravity. saying. That was my whole point. Moving. That's the point is that the, but the that bullet the is moving the through the air. I, I don't get what the contradiction is. If it's a bullet is not moving, moving. with respect to the air. Is that, is that is there's this claim that the atmosphere is rotating in lockstep perfectly with the surface of the earth this well we know clearly that this is not the case because there's wind, oh okay great we agree perfect thank you if that is the case then centrifugal but how force is this must be purely caused well, i'm just saying that by centrifugal force it must you have a real effect must be caused by centrifugal force. well you're assuming that the only force acting on the the air is just gravity but that's not true because there's all sorts of effects. The sun heats up the air, which causes it to be cooler in some places and warmer in others. Is that also part of the Coriolis effect? The no, that's, up? that's something different. Then how um, does that apply here? Because we can't, because we have to look at everything as a whole, right? Okay. No, 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 we don't. No, that's not what we do. We have to isolate variables. That's what we do in the scientific method. That's why we've tried to establish your observed phenomena. That's why we've tried to establish what your hypothesis is. So no, we can't just look at it all. We have to take it in isolation. Right, but you also claim that when we try to isolate things, like put things in a vacuum chamber, that that's not a part of the natural world. Not oh just well. studying the so effects of the vacuum pretty chamber. Pretty cool. That's what you're studying in the vacuum chamber, the effect of the vacuum. So you're not studying a natural phenomena. You're studying a completely unnatural a physical phenomena. Uh, sorry, an unnatural phenomena. Vacuums physical. are not natural. Physical. Uh, so, so you're redefining it now, right? Physical as opposed hey, to natural. No, you don't get to redefine science here. It's a study of the natural world. Observe phenomena in the natural world, right? So back to this. We're not digging up vacuum chambers. Not finding that they've been extinct. <laughs> Me. Philip. Hello. Philip. You can't you can't really believe that a vacuum is a natural phenomenon. 
I can believe it's a physical phenomenon. So what? But it's not a natural phenomenon. It's all about how you We're define natural. About, you know, it, it, this is I yeah. This is, not, already natural. Anything. Doesn't natural mean <laughs> nature? Doesn't natural imply nature? Not made by man. Yeah, man made things are natural too. No, they're not. No, they're absolutely not. It defies the definition of natural, Tim Osman. It is not the case that man made things are natural. They are un wholly unnatural. That's not what natural things are. You men don't make natural things. They can make things from natural stuff, but they are not making things because men are natural doesn't make the stuff they make natural. I just want to say, has anyone has anyone on the flat Earth side ever shot a gun over a uh, mile? What would oh, this yeah. prove? Absolutely. What would it prove? Karen. Tim? What would it Karen. prove? What would the experiment be? Shooting a gun over a mile. Wow. Well, we're here to talk about the Earth as opposed to munitions. You guys on the globe side seem to think this is a munition show. Well, no, okay. actually, I just heard someone talking about the Coriolis effect, and if you don't take that into effect, you will never hit your target over a mile. Take you know what, what into effect? Karen hold on, in hold person. on, Arwin. Take what into effect? Coriolis effect when you're doing what your is, math. What is Coriolis to effect? Target. What is that exactly? The consequence of the Earth spinning. Oh, right, Can and have you got proof of the Earth spinning? Well, the yeah, whole Earth is being spins. a thing. Oh, so we're, we're, we're it's literally a circular into, argument. We're into circular reasoning now, are we, guys? Circular oh, wow. reasoning yes. here on this it's, panel. It's, if yeah, you're wow. a globe head, you can just reason yourself round and round in a big fat circle. That's fine if you're a globe head, right? So, it's called the preponderance of the evidence, guys. Oh, we're into can preponderance of evidence now. To... Right, well, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in scientific evidence. Not preponderance of evidence, because if it's not scientific evidence, I'm not interested. If he hasn't got a hypothesis that I can criticize and have a good look at, I'm not interested. Nathan, you wouldn't understand the hypothesis. It's fine. Oh, really? I understand what a yes. cause and effect is. So, can you establish a cause okay. and effect for a gun? Oh, it doesn't prove the Earth spins. Well, I have a question. How come gyroscopes don't take into account for the Coriolis effect? What do you... No, they don't need to. Oh, really? Well, how, how do planes get from A to B? Because if the if not only is the, is the Earth oh, okay. moving away, so the horizon right. will be different. But you also, understand the planes, have to, planes have to worry about the Coriolis effect. Yes. And what what wow. machines do they use for that? Uh, they use their engine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, last time I checked, a bullet doesn't have an engine on it, which you can steer. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. If you was in Dover and you went to fl to fly to France back in the World War Two or whatever before they had all the modern kit that they have now, right? So they had the plane and they set off. If the Earth's spinning beneath them, why wouldn't they end up in somewhere else instead of because in Dover? They didn't the end. Fly in a straight line, Ranty. Sorry. They didn't fly in a straight line. They adjusted their heading. So they uh, knew about the you... Coriolis effect in World War Two. Oh, yeah, of course they did. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, you're laughing because you don't understand. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I told that they were they aware, aware of the Coriolis dogs. force in World War II, so and I call I've bullshit. And chipmunks, and I've flown gliders. I used to be, uh, well, I used to be somewhere where I was able to fly those type of planes. And I've, I never saw any kind of machine there was ta taught anything that said you have to take into account the Coriolis effect. No, I'm pretty sure they did know about this. They had theorized the Coriolis effect before World War II, certainly. I mean, yeah, but they didn't whether it exists or not is not that that assertion. 10 degrees this way to end up in, uh, in France whilst the, the Earth turns beneath you. Do you know how, how was... big the effect of the Coriolis force is? Well, well you know, you're, be... you're about to tell us that it's going to make, mean that you can't hit anything. No. A mile from a from a bullet. Right, Tim. How, how much, Tim? How much does the Coriolis effect uh, affect the bullet's path? Will you tell me? Quite a bit, quite a bit, because you will not ever relative hit a target. to relative to how. Right. Why, why are we doing this? Why are we establishing what this force that we're trying to establish? How much it affects a bullet when we haven't actually established that the force is in the slightest bit real? We haven't established that. Why are we applying a bullet and its effect? based on this nonsense when we haven't proved the nonsense yet. Because you'll hit your target <laughs> if you actually take it into effect. No, it's very in, hard in to hit the target. The what, what is the experimental evidence of this effect existing at all? 
the fact exactly. that I'm, when not, you I'm use, not coming when you here use... saying I've I've done the scientific method. Now that you guys have listened to Quantum Eraser, now you guys are on this kick of oh, we're gonna do the scientific method, though That's we right. don't do it for the flat Earth. In any... That's right. Big shout out to Quantum Eraser. Massive, massive appreciation is gonna give him his way. I hope he repeats it at nausea so that people understand that the Achilles heel of the globe is the scientific method. You guys have got nothing, nothing that that conforms with it. Nothing proves the globe using that method. You can't your, isolate uh, the variables. Anthony, so you what's, can't your, do it. what's your hypothesis, which the, is alternative, the alternative to the polar The alternative hypothesis for why a bullet does not hit its target is for many factors, but the most notable one is variations in pressure between the firing point and the target, and that will cause the bullet to fluctuate its flight of path. Wind, lots and of wind. Right. And wind. Yeah, right. wind. So, crosswind. Sure. Wind. Right, right, right. Okay, so what? Okay, well, so hang on. That, no, no, no. Wait, if, wait. I were to so do... if the bullet's traveling for one mile and it's in the air for maybe two seconds, right? And it's maybe moved, what, 10 feet, 15 feet, something like this, according to the Coriolis effect. Yes. Um, if a plane is flying, right? How fast is it spinning beneath it? If, if it within one second it's made a, an adjustment of 15 feet, what would a plane do when it's traveling for 30 minutes? The amount of Coriolis force depends on the velocity of the object. Yeah. So unless you're saying that the the plane is going as fast as a bullet. Well, how fast does a bullet go? Planes go at 550 miles an hour. A little bit faster than that. <laughs> may I, may I say him? something? How fast, well, Tim? Uh, no, I mean, I'm just saying that the, the, if you're going to talk about maths, it wouldn't add up. Hello. Even if it was going at four times the speed of the plane. Hello. Hello. I I want to interject for a moment. Um, Quantum Eraser uh, did uh, an an uh, explanation on the Coriolis effect. And if I can present my screen, uh, then I'll have him. This is what he said about the Coriolis effect. This is a quote. What it is exactly? You're not, you're not sharing your screen. There's nothing on your screen. Uh, nothing okay i will try yeah, again I think, well, okay i have on? to do this sorry <laughs> it's new for me uh, yeah can you see it now yes and and he had had this presented a while ago in one of his presentations of, of the four uh, flat earth proofs that he that he made about the coriolis uh, effect it is not um scientific proof but it is a, a logical in inconsistency uh, problem yeah, so that, that that's the thing and here is the definition of, of uh, the Coriolis effect right so exactly this is what I was saying is that there's yeah. that this facts that contradict the because there's this other outstanding claim that the atmosphere rotates with the earth and that's why flight yeah. time are similar in both east and west directions right yeah so there's so two different mm -hmm. reference frames one with the Earth and one non-rotating system, the atmosphere, with everything in it. So and we, yeah, we can disprove the model simply by pointing out internal contradictions. We can, exactly. Well, exactly. We can exactly. You had, well, you I'm had, assuming that you're interpreting this correctly. All right, if you had two armies and, explain. and they both had the same type of rifle, right? And one was, one was firing into the well, Coriolis effect and one was firing with the Coriolis effect. Technically, you could fire further. One army could fire further than the other. Let, let's no, switch because with the force is perpendicular to the trajectory. Yeah, you with know what? Let, let, no. Let's go to the planes because that, he he explains this with with planes flying from east to west. I, I'd I'd like to for a moment, just very shortly, inter, interdict something else, and that is, you know, why a bike, when you actually ride it, stays upright. Because That's the momentum, the momentum stabilizes it into its singular direction, and that highly contradicts the concept that a Coriolis what? effect would deviate a bullet because it would the extreme speed would actually cause it causes it to stabilize its path. So it's just mm, not real. I think you're you're talking about two different things. So like yeah, one is well, that, hold on a second. Second. sorry, Philip, to interrupt. No, no, I, I, it's fine. I, so, I sorry to interrupt you, Philip. Just, talking just, can, about, you just the problem Betty, is... can you just let Betty get to an end of a point? Because she's she's started, <laughs> but then someone else has brought up two more points, Ranty and Arwen. Yeah. But if well, you can just get to the I end think of a point, I am not good at reading out loud in in, in English. I'm sorry, um, but um, well, we are doing this with the, with the flights from east to west, 
So you have a flight going to North uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, to LA, and he he says it's here. And so if you have um, a flight, then it should be a different time uh, f uh, that you get there. So if you fly from east to west or from west to east, the times should be different. And they are not. So why is that? And that's what what is explained. So you can't have. Wait, the, so why uh, the, why do the times have to be different? Because she thinks that if a plane rises from the ground, the Earth is spinning and the atmosphere doesn't spin at all. So they, it's just like flat Earth 1.0, yeah. Eric Dubé. No, exactly. That first effect actually hold on, works. Hold on. Can you just work let as Betty well. have this out? Come on. No, please. it's the same thing like like um, when you hover a, a helicopter, then you should get a, reach your point when you are traveling with the spin <laughs> of the Earth. That's the same the thing. Air is not... Yes. The air is moving with the earth, so I don't yes, see... Yes, so that's why you should be able to hover a helicopter you and can. go... <laughs> but there's not, I don't see the contradiction there, because the air is moving along with the earth's surface. So the only force acting on the... The only forces acting on the helicopter are the lift and gravity pointing down. First you have to, to prove private gravity then. But... Okay, whatever, <laughs> the downward acceleration that people have called gravity. There is a downward there is a downward acceleration, as so people he, in this panel will agree with. Yeah, they don't they don't he's like gravity, so just don't say it. Uh, I'm fine with gravity, but you are. Betty, when are you gonna get married to a uh, Geostrebe? Hold on, can you just scroll up a bit? Let's see the first definition, Betty. Uh, scroll up? Yeah please. Uh, it begins here. Maybe you should read it yourself because I'm I'm not good at explaining it. But this is what Quantum Eraser uh, um, explained a while ago. And nobody has dif disproved this. Nobody has uh, gotten with a really good argument why this is true or false. Hey Nathan, on Psy Strike last night, they went over, <laughs> they went over uh, what's his face? Uh, Quantum Eraser. It's pretty interesting. Why, why 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 rhetoric and... My so why, why all of this is that an extreme trajectory, extreme speeds with a, a stable aerodynamic shape will actually stabilize a straight line path. So Corey, well, the, point is, the point is that he wants to complete nonsense. Wait, wait, Arwen, Arwen, hold on just a second. So you, in a bullet, you want to make it aerodynamic so it doesn't feel, it feels as it little force from the atmosphere. Yes. So it feels as little force from the atmosphere as possible, right? So you don't want the atmosphere to affect the trajectory of the bullet. Obviously, you can't make that perfect, but you know you do your best to make it stabilized. So then any other thing that's not related to the atmosphere is still going to have an effect on the bullet. Hold on. So let's just read number two. Uh, you've just moved it. Sorry, Betty. Can you just go back? Like this? Yeah, uh, I think so. I lost where I was now. Sorry. Yeah, here it is. Are gas yes. molecules attached to, no, the, scroll, scroll to each other up. moving? Scroll, scroll back up. All right. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so how scroll do the gas up. molecules... Scroll back up. Just so a second. Sorry. All right, let me try and explain this because I think I have a decent explanation. Number two, the object in question not physically attached. All right, let's just go first start out with the atmosphere, it right? To so it is, it is not a force. It, is, it appears to deflect. Right, so let's just talk about the atmosphere since that's the first thing that people try to claim as a contradiction, right? So if I take, uh, if I take a, say, <coughs> fluid moving through a pipe, right? Is it not true that there's going to be a force of friction between the fluid and the sides of the pipe? You're uh, talking about fluids. Yes, air is a fluid as well. No, it, it has a different Not properties. Gas should have a different property than no, fluid. Liquid, um, no, no, okay. There's a difference. Liquids exactly. are liquids are different than gases. Exactly. But liquids they have and gases are ca characterized as fluids. Yeah, but why? Yes, why don't but gas don't have have molecular bonds, so they are moving independently. Um, liquids. Can right, be but that's what that's what differentiates a liquid from a gas. Exactly. So don't equivocate with those. But I'm saying fluid. I'm saying Wait, fluid. I've just read through it now. Yeah, so there is a contradiction. Fluid. There is. The only reason that you're saying fluid is so that you can apply some of the properties of liquid to this case where it's not appropriate, obviously. So it's just soft. Right. Uh, let me. Uh, so I have a. I have an explanation. So why? Why? Why do you feel a friction? 
when you when something is uh, hitting against the the surface of something, it's because the molecules in the fluid are scattered by that the wall itself. So, what happens is, if let's say the Earth's atmosphere, we could just make it stand still, but keep the Earth rotating underneath. What will happen is the molecules. They'll be bouncing around every which way direction, but generally they'll be pulled towards the Earth because of gravity. And as they collide with the surface, they're going to gain momentum in the direction of the rotation of the Earth. No, because it doesn't apply to gases. Okay, and why don't are we gases have... not made out of molecules? Why don't we have the, the wind be... then? And they, they apply. Have... And they... No, 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 no. Wind. Hold on, I'm not even. You guys are no. The gas is being pulled down, and the reason why we feel pressure is because the gas molecules are hitting the surface of the Earth, right? Do you agree? That's what no. pressure is. It's gas molecules colliding with the surface of the oh. Earth. So yeah. gas pressure now. I'm gas, talking about gas I'm pressure. Just... But gas pressure, that's, that's an older, different topic. No, it's not. It's related. The pressure because of a gas basically... is a force that ga the gas exerts on the walls of its container. So now yes, we are living exactly. in a container. Why? So we no. have a container. The atmosphere is a container. The ground is part of the the container. Yes, the ground is is Only the ground, the ground? in contact with the gas. What about the sky? What about the sky then? The pressure decreases as you go up. I wonder why that is. Sorry, but, she just asked uh, if you're in a the container. The properties of a gas is that it is the force of the gas it exerts on the walls of its container. So, <clears throat> right, oh. and in one direction I have gravity, which is pulling it down. <coughs> There's no other force acting on. But you have to prove gravity the... first. That's Sorry, the, the Philip, thing. What she's saying is, is if it's supposed to be in a container, <laughs> do we have oh a lid? Oh my god! Do we have yeah. a lid? Do we have a lid on the Earth? You don't need a lid if the only force acting on the particles is gravity. Well, how do we know that there's no lid if the definition of how a gas works is how it works on the walls of its container? You're the friction no walls, is a right? resistance yeah. to motion, right? What, and... what are we talking about friction for? This this is something else. The, you know how gases work. You have to. You have a. a... I know how gases work. You're okay, so you have you have uh, uh, your tire on your bike or on your car. If I have a column of air, which is which is in a whatever, you can pick a container. Exactly, you pick a container. Where it doesn't have a lid, but it's infinitely tall. I don't need a I don't need a top on that. Sorry, what's this infinitely yeah, tall? Yeah, it's a varying thing? pressure uh, system. So yeah, if you're, the pressure if you're gonna say you, go up, you have no evidence. You're gonna say it's closed. Then no evidence it whatsoever. Be yourself. No, there's no evidence to support that. That's just a a claim that you're making. Do you not believe that there's a varying pressure system on Earth? Yeah, of course there is. Okay, so and it's not if, we're, if it's enclosed, acceleration. if it's enclosed, no. then why? Why is there a bearing pressure system? How does that work? We're not asserting it is enclosed. We're saying that gases that he's talking about, if they're going to be measured, it's defined in terms of how they act on the container. And if you're saying we're not in a container, well, we mm -hmm. kind of are because we've got an infinite amount of space above us. No citation, just an assertion. Then that's nonsense. No, the it, container yeah, is the ground. Friction sorry, is sorry the... Tim, is the ground the lid of the container? That's what we're asking. Do you agree that the air is that out? <laughs> well, how do you have an atmosphere next to a vacuum? But this is what Betty was trying to articulate. It's not next to a vacuum, you idiot. Well, you say space is a vacuum. Yeah, it is. Talking about 100 miles, dude. Sorry, yes, we do have Hundreds. an atmosphere next to a vacuum, have... according to you heliocentrists. That's what, exactly what you believe. No, no, we have we no. have a high pressure next to a slightly less pressure next to a slightly less pressure Thank until you. it goes all the way. <laughs> and up at to... some point, at some point, and that goes the against the, the laws of entropy. That goes along against the laws of entropy. But you just no, said it, yes. It's not. No, it doesn't. And then there's a, there's a point where there's <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yes, because you have to get in equilibrium. The, the system is in equilibrium, actually. That's how that's... so? How so? If you have different because layers, because there's a force being applied on the gas. Yes, but then you have to prove that, that force. force what is that force? Yeah, what's that force? Oh, okay. The fact that we have sorry, what's that force that's acting on him? What proves the force? that there is a force there? Yeah, what but force? what's the proof? What's the mechanism of of that 
that's forced. Oh, I don't need mechanism. to have a mechanism that's... because oh, no, yeah. we can just have a just so story, can't we? We don't need to know. Why would we need to know this stuff? We can just make it up. <laughs> mass attracting mass. I we can no, just see, make I it up. Mass answer, attracts mass. Cavendish. It, so yeah. Nonsense. We've gone well, past that, right? We're not using that anymore, Tim. Einsteinian gravity, my friend. So the bending is space time, Betty. Right, so that's got sod all to do with mass attracting mass now, hasn't it, Tim? So why would you assert such nonsense? No, but okay, so my assertion is that <laughs> my assertion is that we live in an accelerating reference frame. Right. And I have of that? two pieces of evidence for that. One, okay. that things fall when I drop them. And two, the pound repka experiment, which shows that life gets light gets blue shifted as it moves perpendicular to the surface of the earth, which only happens in an accelerating reference frame. So but that's just when you take phenomena. Faith. What's your observed phenomena in that experiment? <laughs> yeah. Uh, redshift of lights. Yeah, red but you just light. take that on faith. That's not something that you've actually demonstrated to yourself, right? That's just a behind uh, closed. So now we're doing zetetic, uh, z z uh, zetetic yes. philosophy? Yes, yes. Yeah. We're going to look at it. We can, we're going to have a look, a little we, look and a little oh. touch and a little taste. Yes, that's right. Oh, um, so man. Much. You guys are going to be terrible scientists. Well, <laughs> science? Sorry, science being observing things in the natural world as opposed to what philosophy which is what you do there's so much fraud going on that we have to be zetetic to be serious about how do you know that there's fraud nasa well you've just told us that there's no vacuum next to a you know next to an atmosphere and then you turned around and said well hang on no there's different degrees of the atmosphere to the point where it's almost no atmosphere and then it meets the it meets the vacuum of space. Yes. So at some point, that. the vacuum of space needs to meet the atmosphere, no matter whether it's one hundred thousandth of the atmosphere that we're experiencing on, on the plane of the Earth right here or way up top. At some point, the atmosphere meets the vacuum. So the, yes, the, the question, the problem sorry, I just want to phrase that as a question. So if we have this um, this effect where the atmosphere is being dragged along with the Earth, and we have this gradient that goes up and up and up and up forever. Does that mean that the entire thing, all the way up to the very tippy top of this ever decreasing uh, air density, does that mean that that in and of itself is also being dragged along with the Earth? Yes. Really? Right. There's up only to one Saturn. force acting on it. Right. So the How gravitation of all of Earth force. is enough to keep the atmosphere <laughs> into its tiny, tiny separations into inf infinitely next to nothing, but not quite well, nothing. No, That's Nathan, all being dragged next, last along time with I the checked, Earth. Is it? Last time I checked, force equals mass times acceleration. So if there's one force, then you can have an acceleration which moves things. And what's that force? Gravity. Oh, really? Gravity's not Back a force. to this fairy tale <laughs> that's got no evidence. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, you're no, also that you don't accept. Where, where, so you're contradicting yes. Einstein's model of uh, general relativity. I'm not, because Einstein's model also includes Newton's laws in it. If you go to very slow velocities, yes, yes, it does. It does. No, it does not include Newton's. Um, it does. In the non relativistic it limits, it becomes Newton's equations of motion. Nathan, no, do you think that's the limits? Okay. With that, I'm going to say, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully for sharing this debate. And, of course, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you've not done so already, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!